Hello everybody and welcome back to our FCS Dynasty in NCAA Football 2006. Today we've got the VMI Cadets who are 0-2 on the season hosting the 1-0 9th ranked Tulane Green Wave. This is a very interesting matchup and I've got the Green Wave winning this one 49-14 in my prediction. Well, let's see what the guys think about that and I'll see you guys down on the field. Greetings from EA Sports. I'm Brad Nessler, and alongside me are Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit. Clear skies and just beautiful weather here for tonight in between the Tulane Green Wave and the home team. The college football season continues, and I got to tell you, Lee and Kirk, I am ready for this game. And here comes the home team. The home team are looking for an upset in this one, but Kirk, I just don't see that happen. Tulane has one of the best linebackers in the nation, and he can do it all, whether it's stuffing the run or playing the pass in coverage. He'll be all over the place today and lead his team to victory, Coach. I agree with you on this one. I'm surfing the green way today, Kirk. Go Tulane. This one's almost underway, so we're about to find out real quick just how smart of a pick that was, Coach. So VMI has no shot, according to everyone in the entire college football universe. And with good reason, since their defense has not been that great this year. Here's Hufford, the backup halfback, filling in for suspended Cam Sanders. That is another reason they had three players suspended before their game against Bryant. Um, they do have one of them back. But Jake Berry, the tight end, and Cam Sanders will still be out for this game and one more after this. But VMI has a nice drive so far. Getting a first down here is Matt Keller, second and ten. Hops rolling out left side. He's got over 400 passing yards this season. And there is a face mask on Tulane. He also has 75 plus rushing yards. But Hops has six fumbles and four interceptions in just two games. Not what you want to see out of your quarterback. But he does get a touchdown right here. Untouched into the end zone. Fantastic call by the offensive coordinator. And VMI off to a fast start. 7-0 over the ninth ranked Green Wave. And on the ensuing kickoff from the three-yard line is Bray. And he is going to take this one left side hurdles. Two guys giving chase. Stovall is hit in the back. I'm not sure if they call a penalty on this or not. And they finally throw the flag. And that negates a huge touchdown off a kick return. That brings them back to their 42-yard line. A very unnecessary block that was. And here's Wilson with a nice catch. Darius Peters on the tackle. Peters has seven tackles. One interception and four pass deflections coming into today's game. And one of the other defensive leaders is Bryson Shields. He had five tackles, one pick, and three pass deflections on the season. And here is Joseph Martin with a huge catch up to the 48-yard line. Perfectly thrown pass over two defenders. And a great route by Martin. Hops pressured over the middle to Booth, who is the leading receiver for the Cadets so far. Third and three, Matt Keller, the big fullback, gets the first down. And now in the second quarter, second and ten for the Cadets. Hops taken off again, and he is going to truck through a defender, getting a first down up to the 31-yard line. Actually, they didn't give it to him. It's third and inches, but Keller picks it up. First and ten. Play action. Hops is hit, and he fumbles the football for the seventh time on the season, and it is recovered by Tulane. Another turnover from Justin Hops, and that has been one of the big stories of this season so far. He threw three interceptions against Bryant and had a couple fumbles in that game. Here's Ham up the gut for the first down as Tulane looks to put together a nice drive. Brown, the elusive quarterback, throws over the middle, caught by Kendrick, and he gets a first down out of that somehow. Great run after the catch. Now third and five, toss play to Ham. And he's going to get another first down here, about an 11-yard pickup right through the defense. Second and four. Brown going to throw it again. Taking a shot to Kendrick. It's picked off by Darius Peters, the user interception. I read it perfectly. And tack on five yards for the face mask penalty. Cadets looking pretty good so far, but that pass is uh, deflected away. And VMI will punt the ball away. Their defense is playing phenomenal right now. 
And the offense just needs to score a little bit more as Ham breaks loose. Bryson Shields tracks him down at the 16 yard line. Ham up to 72 yards on five carries. Brown, left side wide open is Clark. I'm not sure why Bryson Shields was still backpedaling. First and goal from the one. Brown, left side, picked off again by Darius Peters. His third on the season, second of the game. And that was a huge one from the one yard line. Tulane looking like the Seahawks right now. But can the offense get some points on the board here to extend their lead? Here is Hufford. He is crushed and fumbles it. But it is recovered by the offense, luckily for VMI. Hufford again, backup halfback, diving for the first down, doesn't get it. Third and inch is upcoming, a huge play here. And Matt Keller is going to get it. Look at the speed from the fullback. Pass midfield just about, breaking a tackle out of bounds. And a great run for Matt Keller. Hop's going to throw it. Pressured. Just evades the defender. He's got Booth wide open for another catch inside the 30-yard line to the 27. And that's the ninth first down of the game for the Cadets. Hops rolling out right side. He's got Martin open. Throws it up, but it's deflected and picked off by Jackson. Very unfortunate. Hops did not get enough air under that pass. Third and two. Tulane still has some time to get some points. And there's another nice run for Ham. And Brown's going to chuck one up here. All day to throw it. He finds Wilson. And Wilson is gone. Look at the speed difference. My goodness. So with seven seconds left in the first half, VMI gives up a huge touchdown for Tulane to tie the ball game up. If VMI went into the half with the lead, that would have been humongous. But 7-7 seven seven is the score. Tulane gets the ball to start off. Brown over the middle to Hayden, runs over the safety, and he is going to coast into the end zone for another touchdown for the Green Wave. But there's a holding call. Late flag comes in and backs him up to their own 40-yard line. Brown's going to have to chuck it up again. Deep downfield, Bryson Shields gets beat inside the 15-yard line. First down, Wilson, four catches, a buck 30 through the air. And the tight end around one of the most unstoppable plays in the NCAA football game series. And they get a touchdown out of it. 14-7 now. Tulane on top here in the third quarter. Hops looking to get his offense back on the board. And he's going to take off. He'll get the first down and more. He's very electric once he gets into the open field. Third and ten, though. Hops taking a deep shot right side. And that is not even close. He wanted right on the pass, and he overshot him by about five yards. Third and three. Ham to the outside. Peters blocked in the back, and they're not going to call it. And Ham is in for the touchdown. There was a couple uh, clipping penalties right there that were not called. VMI down two touchdowns now. Hops with a nice run. Gets taken down right in front of the head coach, Rondé Barber. Still looking for his first win as the Cadets coach. And Hufford fumbles the football again. Wright recovers it, and he fumbles it. And Leach would recover. Matt Keller stuffed. In short yardage situations, now four, uh, fourth and sec fourth and two, if I can speak correctly. Hops rolling out right side, and he's going to throw it instead of taking off for the easy first down, but it was a good decision. He had a man wide open. He just did not have enough air under that pass, like Brown just did. Find Kendrick for another green wave touchdown. They're starting to pull away now, folks. 28-7 to seven here in the third. Perfectly paced pass. Nice spiral. Hops needs to answer now. Pressured, rolling around all day. Wide open is Jason Wright for the first down pass midfield. A great play to the wide receiver. Hops going to option it out to Hufford, who's in the open field. Has the first down and more. Nice juke move and taken out of bounds at the 28-yard line. His best run of the game. But another third and long situation. Hops taking a shot to the end zone. Deflected away. He wanted to find Wright. He did not. VMI sends on the field goal unit. The kick is through the uprights and good. And it's 28-10, to 10, third and 13. Big play here for the VMI defense, and they get the stop as Hayden goes out of bounds short of the first down. But VMI continues to get stuck in these third and long situations, and Hops running over the two-lane head coach gets the first down. Hops pressured and sacked way back at the 22-yard line. Makes it third and 18 now. Martin wide open, and he had him 
And I believe it just bounced right off his hands. So Tulane gets the ball back again. Brown, right side. Hayden's got it. Taken down at the 21 yard line. And Tulane just keeps driving down the field over the middle. And Wilson lays out for a great catch and a first down. Brown, left side, wide open is Bell. And he carries battle into the end zone for another two lane touchdown, 35 to 10. And we have yet to see any of Trey Upton today, who came into today's game with six tackles, two for a loss, one sack, one pick, and a pass deflection. And we've mostly seen hops on offense today, 79 yards on the ground, getting a lot of third and long first downs. And there's a pitch back to Hufford. He might as well have just kept the ball. Hufford and Keller both with 58 yards today as Hufford gets another first down. VMI just trying to sustain a nice drive here to finish the game off. Tops sacked again. He was crushed by Smith, the left end for his second sack of the game. It's third and 20 now. Hops pressured again. Right side deflected up in the air. Picked off by Harris at the 48-yard line. Hops has a lot of turnovers this season. And Tulane is just going to continue to pour it on here. In Virginia, 42 to 10 is the score and the final. And VMI drops to 0-3 on the season. Tulane improves to 2-0. Rondé Barber still searching for his first career victory as the head coach. And it didn't come today. Hops did not play very well when it comes to turnovers and holding on to the football. But he did really well running the ball. He doubled his season total for rushing yards in this game. And 309 yards of offense for VMI, 443 for two lane, three, uh, three sacks for the Green Wave, three turnovers for VMI, five fumbles on the day, only one loss, very lucky in that aspect of the game. 35 points in the second half for two lane, made him pull away, and VMI was looking very impressive in the first half, but Justin Hopps, 6 of 22, 116 yards, two picks, sacked three times, not a very good day throwing the football. But he had 72 yards rushing with a touchdown. Hufford with 63 yards and Keller with 58. Hufford doing a decent job filling in for Cam Sanders, but he had three fumbles in this game. Gary Booth continues to lead the team in receiving yards. He has 163 now on the year. Martin with 22 today and Wright with a 33-yard reception. Both subscriber wide receivers had two drops today. Wright had a pancake, Darius Peters, six tackles, Bryson Shields with four, Peters of course had the two interceptions, Trey Upton, three tackles, and Henry Hamilton, one for a loss, Jason Wright had a tackle, and that's pretty much it for the defense, nothing too crazy except for Darius Peters, uh, two interceptions and four pass deflections, Bryson Shields also had one. And this is not the only game that's going to be out today, folks. Dayton taking on Eastern Michigan later on today. That'll be out in maybe an hour or two. And there's the top three players of the game. Hops with one rushing touchdown. Exciting. Our next VMI Cadets football game will be week six as they host the UT Chattanooga Mox in their Big 12 opener. Our next game, which will be out today, will be the Dayton Flyers, who are 1-1 one -on, -one on the season, taking on the 10th-ranked Eastern Michigan Eagles. I will see you guys with that in an hour or two, I think. If not, I'll see you in this comment section below. Take it easy, guys.